the mega logai of yahweh el elyon elohim is always alive and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to guard a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkanu, to the highest, and peace be to be the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill to them who love to walk breath by breath in the fear of the Lord our God, in order to seek His true knowledge and understand that being in fellowship with Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, is our true life. Being in fellowship and marching in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, is our true victory on this earth. To those who have been here to do the will of Lord God the Father, in understanding His true will and mind, and those who are intended to work for His glory, breath by breath, if they're really true believers, then let them understand the poio character of Christ which has inculcated in us to realize in an example of Joseph what we are looking in the case of Mary, the birth of Christ our Lord our God and the way how Zachariah was the man who though was been given a great vision of the appearance of the angel of the Lord our God yet he had doubt in his mind to believe and he was dumb till John the Baptist could be born. Such great punishments which have been inculcated to the minds of this man as well in the church age who at the best privileges of all time with the plero of all completed canon with the plero of indwelling mentoring ministry of baptism of Lord God the Holy Spirit at the plera o which calls for us Ephesians 2 20 and 21 if this people would truly understand that we have been built together to form the naon temple of the Lord of our God the inner sanctuary not just the outward sanctuary of which we can think the common place and the holy place but we are talking about the holy of the holy place the inner sanctuary we have been built together and in what case and how we have been built together Colossians 1 21 and 22 gives a great reason how as such we could be built together in his grace therefore opening our verse to Colossians 1 21 it teaches to us dear brethren you that were sometime aliens and enemies in mind by wicked works yet now he hath reconciled us how in the body of his flesh through death of Thanatos to present us holy and blameless and above all agnacatas. The word agnacatas, unreprovable, irreproachable, so that there could be no one who could absolutely come and tell for you that though you have done such kind of a great things to this generation of the church age yet they were failures for this cause of a lot of a God has made in the church age for the highest and the best that's what corruption at its best will be the worst of all time we the church age believers have been given the greatest thinking of all time we have been indwelled by the Trinity therefore through him we both have access by one spirit unto Lord God the Father. This great epistles of Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians particularly teach for us this mystery epistles three together. In Philippians 3.20 as well, when we read it says, Our plera of ultima privileges or our heavenly citizenship 
we are not minding the earthly things but the word says for our conversion that is not the word the word which has to be plural oh, the things pertaining to the polity of privileged believer so that our great capacity and caliber which has been given for us the citizenship in the heavens which is being inherent out of which our saviour we are waiting for the lord and saviour jesus christ therefore who shall change our wild body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself this two verses certainly teach to us what are we how are we and what is our greatest privilege that we are are having that access to not get the father through that one spirit and the greek word calls for us prosaganan which meant to say which is a combination of parousia boldness confidence and with this boldness and confidence dear brethren day by day we are been called in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit to walk in him therefore in verse number 19 he says now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners but you are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of god and then he says if we are the household of god always dear brethren if we can go back and look even proverbs 10 10 proverbs 9, 9, 10, which teaches to us, not 10, 10, that the starting or the original or the initiation is always of the wisdom of the Lord of God, and that wisdom of the Lord of God begins through Yira, the word of Yare, what we read 3372, and then we read 3373. Lord of God, in the case of Job, he calls 3373, he fears me, and Satan says, no, he doesn't fear you for the reason of godly one. He fears fears you for the reason of emotional one 3372 but in proverbs 910 when we come the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom or the word for us to call the starting point the original wisdom is been done and given for us through yira y i r a h 3374 and this is a combination for us to understand wherewith many people who haven't truly made up their mind to understand how and what is the meaning of this definition called as yira the reason why i'm taking this today dear brother and to teach to you what are we in the sight of the lord of god in ephesians 2:19 but why are we not able to make up those standards to build upon bible doctrine purely because we haven't truly understood what is the right definition of the fear of the lord of god in this great and unique dispensation of the church age though much is given for us and much is expected from us yet we are turning out to become the greatest failures that's what corruption at the bust is the worst how you can say we are turning out to be greatest corruptors because we are not able to walk in the right fear of the lord of god neither we are able to search what is the true opening what is the true commencement what is the first and the original fear and for this cause dear brethren if one truly recognizes as lord of a god as as all powerful the one who is been able to control everything and that's what then the right fear which is nothing but the terror the reverence the things pertaining to godliness the things pertaining to yahweh yahweh will be the result only when you can come in our way which is a w e the fear and terror that's what we read in isa 66 1 and 2 as well the people in the church age really don't fear my lord neither they have the doctrine wherewith job concerning in one one of a lord of god gives a great witness and that's what dear brethren we will come back and look about that but here we find the right era will come or 3374 is the result when you truly recognize as lord and savior jesus christ being the all powerful in all the dealings that we go through is omniscient is omnipotent and is omnipresent he is the only omnipotent of all the things he is the one he says for us in isaiah 42:5 to give breath to all the flesh he is the one who controls 
according to the statutes of the ordinances given to the moonlight the sunlight and the galaxies and everything whatever you can go back even to see the farthest part of the heaven or to the foundations of the earth you can go back and stretch and see that's what he says and the furthermore he says the dividing asunder of this waters as well and the same thing in hebrews 4 to 12 dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit it is he who has made us it is he who has given us this work it is he who has given all these things therefore he is all powerful therefore even the great prayer of us chronicles 28 9 when david wants to give for his son blessed be the lord god of israel forever and forever it is in his hand to make high it is in his hand to make low it is he who makes everything there we can understand the omniscient power of the lord of a god the omnipotent power of the lord of a god and the omnipresent power of our lord of a god in fact indeed we are alive because of his breath therefore in john 3 we read how the breath comes and goes you do not know likewise it is the spirit of the lord of a god it is always present in its immanence and transcendence character that's why he is indwelling in you at the same time he is in the third heaven the throne room of grace of the lord of a god He is such kind of an all-powerful one, and those who truly recognize that He is in control of all the things—that's what I want to say. Era three, three, seven, four—they certainly have towards that great Lord of our God that fear, that terror, that reverence. As many people do not understand what is that reverence towards the Lord of our God, they want to become reverence on this earth. the only title eligible to my christ and to this christendom many of the people who think that they have the bona fide gift if they would really understand what is this bona fide gift they would certainly erase out their name to be called as reverend they would only call as a pastor teacher because our lord of a god alone has that reverence and you see the mind of this people not to have that fear of the lord therefore they call themselves as reverends they call themselves as the things pertaining to be like god no doubt the word of the lord of god says to them whom i gave the word of the lord of god they are like gods to whom to unbelievers not for our own selves the shepherd will teach with authority not like scribes that authority given for him by the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit the moment of salvation when he grows day by day day by day day by day diligently seeking and searching when you diligently seek and when you diligently make up your life to consider that's what psalms 24 is all about who can ascend who can be in the presence of the lord of our god the one who has an innocent hands the one who is having no fear in his heart because he is walking with the way of the lord of our god and the one who is kneeling down barak in the righteousness of the lord of our god so that he can understand what it is he has called us in righteousness in christ and what a great privilege it is when we go back and look upon that psalm the one who says to darash to darash not just once to diligently seek the hebrew has twice repetition to say darash upon darash the first darash being with the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher so that the work of lord god the holy spirit can guide you over there and the first mentoring ministry our universal mentoring ministry upon every believer lord god the holy spirit giving you this human mentor therefore growing into one body we shall read that in ephesians 2 The growth of that work has been done by the pastor teacher. He is a mediator between now for you to understand the teachings of apostles and prophets which has been taken and scrutinizing and learning them in the proper terms of isagogic categories and exegesis and training you up being rooted and grounded you in love of lord of in, in the love of lord's doctrine. And you are the great mediator link growing up into one body being fitly together to be called as the holy saint word and that's why we have been here given the ere the fear the one who is all powerful only our lord of god is all powerful 
and if you can truly recognize that then yire will be reflected in your attitude and your daily life so that in the form of a great reverence you can pay back to that lord our god that which is due unto him his glory that which is due unto him his honor therefore proverbs 10 10 9 10 says for us the right opening or the right tequila the word commencement or original the first fear is nothing but the first wisdom is nothing but yira three three seven four it is not three three seven three either three three seven three is what our lord our god witnessed towards job but here we find three three seven four the resultant of it the resultant of Job's life as an example for us. The resultant of it. Yira. And this Yira is what when you recognize that Lord of a God is only all powerful. There is nothing that has been needed for us to be as a mediatory or an intermediatory stages. We are from Lord God the Father for which cause he has prayed for us in John 17, 4 through 10. And he teaches for us that he shall be glorified in us, through us, when we produce in us the character of Christ. So for that cause he demands in us what? The fear of the Lord of a God. Era. Trembling at his word. And those who recognize that they are certainly in their attitude and in their life. This fear of the Lord of a God is being reflected. And they will call my Lord only as reverence or Yire. Therefore, the start of wisdom is the fear of Yahweh. That's the great thing. We are serving the name of the great Lord of a God, which is nothing but Jehovah, what we call a Jehovah. It is a name for the gift of revolution to the sinful mankind that the fear of Yahweh no other gods apart from him all these gods have been man-made brain child imaginations daimonian idotes the only creator who made us that's why even in the past we look 850 prophets have been killed by Elijah that's what we look even Joshua going back and taking the bones of the priests of them and burning them down those who have built those altars including their own genealogy of the life of the family of the fathers what they have done earlier who couldn't walk in the will of right of the Lord of a God which could be perfect according to the righteousness of Christ so what did Joshua do at a very young age was his heart was tender unto the Lord of a God and he performed once again renting out his clothes and putting ash upon his head and once again building back the glorious work of Christ what a privilege it would be the feast like that that have been kept hasn't been kept right from the day of the Moses law at least something we have to achieve in Christ under for that great name called as Yahweh Today when you go back and look, we never love to kneel down and read the Bible. But in Genesis 7, 3, for flyer of the heaven, we can call kneeling down and reading the Bible seven times. Then what? You will go to cleanse the garbage that has been there in the terms of clearing this filth. The filth of sliving the beer, the filth of sliving the lion. First time in the filth of your translation, you kneel down and write. The second time, you write kneeling down in the presence of the Lord of God in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic interlinear. And every word you go and dig and seek and search. And you diligently follow the will of Lord God the Father. These are the people who have been really blessed. These are the people where our Lord of God is delighted in. These are the people for whom the promises which have been given, like Isaiah 42, 4, Joshua 1, 5 through 9, the promises which have been prayed for us in John 17, 4 through 8 or 10 will apply. Not for every knucklehead who can go back and type some things and say, this is the promise I got from the Lord of God. Look upon your walk. Look upon the fear that you have to pay to the Lord of God. If you're truly fearing upon his word, then you should be a disciple to the Lord of God. If you're not a disciple, then you are not having that fear of the Lord of God in your life. If you're not able to teach and train them up every day by the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, which is the only work for him to train you up, to become the faithful disciples, to train you up to become the tecton believers, to train you up to become the adult sons of Lord's glory, 
if the pastor teacher doesn't do that every day then he isn't having the fear of the Lord of our God Yere he doesn't have because he is not able to look what is the divine wisdom which comes from above which is pure says even James it doesn't have any power like EI in it the variation or description of colors it is only one it, if it has been the same during the time which has been trained for us from the time of the book of law to train your child the way he has to go and make them disciples if Deuteronomy 4, 2 and 4, 12 or the terms pertaining to Deuteronomy 12, 2 and 32 you shall not diminish any word of the Lord our God but you shall love, but you shall love to devote yourselves to teach them and make them disciples and increase in them the word called as Bina, the understanding so that they can come to their own senses, so that they can come and look and understand what is the perceiving nature of this great intelligence in Christ, what we have. All of these things which have been given for us right from the beginning, not now in the church, so that you can call them, go and preach the gospel so that they could be saved. No, that work is secondary, provided for you first, you grow up to become like Christ and become the disciples of the Lord. When you become disciples of the Lord our God, your communication will be effective. Your great work to seek and counsel the Lord's glory will be effective. For you to have a great life, a love life, a life with the love with the Lord of a God. Your work will be a joyous as much because every breath you go, you get everywhere, you spread the fragments of Christ and at every thought you get into captivity for Christ, then you know very well Satan cannot even touch you. You're trampling a terror with Satan under your feet. We have been called for such a great glorious life in Christ. But what you do, you are not able to walk in the fear of the Lord our God. Neither you are, you are able to seek and diligently search Him. Therefore, what do you find? All mannerisms of errors. Can you say you truly fear the Lord our God? Can you say you truly have the wisdom of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim? If you are truly having the wisdom of the Lord our God, then Lord our God should have in you the way how he had an example pertaining to Job to say, Have you seen my servant Job? The servant Job case, when we go back and look in Job chapter 1, before the times pertaining to equivalence of Genesis, we can look. This episode, this book of Job has been written for us so that we can truly understand what it is that we have in Christ this great witnesses for every believer in the Lord so dear brethren we find in Job 1 1 the great introduction which has been said there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job and that man number one was perfect and upright and that one feared, again we find the word here, 3373, Lord of a God, and he eschewed evil. This great words, can our Lord of a God be a testimony for us? Are we saying in our own selves, yes, we can have the testimony and we are not worried about that? And yet the word of the Lord our God calls for us to cross check lest any man thinks that he has been able to stand. Take heed lest he shall fall. So that dear brethren, if we are not able to do that which is right and perfect in the Lord's will, the way how Apostle Paul calls for us in Galatians 4 verse number 10 and 11. For idly, without reason, without cause. The labor what we are bestowing upon you every day is it been ending up in vain because you haven't come to stand to judge yourselves in your consciousness to know what are you doing whether you are daily following and carrying the, the cross of the Lord of our God in the footsteps of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ or are you just become a nominal or a conventional Christian not making up your time to come back and learn Bible doctrine every day. No matter what it is even though there may be a death in your home you cannot let go Bible doctrine that day because that's your life. The life in the sense for you, for Christ, when we give our life, for that we forsake our life, is going to give us greater life, says the word. And that life, what we're going to say, is not just, dear brethren, to let go the glory of the Lord of our God, to conquer Him, to know about Him, to learn about Him, to think like Him, to be like Him, to walk like Him in His footsteps. And that's what many people don't understand about these great things. 
and this great privilege which has been given for us in the church age. Therefore, dear brethren, when Eliphaz rebukes Job in Job 4 verse 6, we find a great word which says for us, Is not this thy fear, thy confidence, thy hope, and the uprightness of thy ways? He is asking something, and here we can find thy hope. And do you know what is the word thy hope? When we go back and look and see in the Hebrew, it has been given for us as the code number 8615. It meant to say tikwa. It meant to say taken from the one for us to understand literally a cord or an attachment or figuratively expectancy or expectation wherewith that I long for. It is like a cord wherewith your brethren the hope what Eliphaz is asking the question do you know what is the answer for the job? It is again Job 1.1. One, one. What a great privilege it is. Can we have the tick in us? What is that Job 1.1? One, one? The man who fears the Lord of a God. The man who eschews evil. The man who has been witnessed by that great Lord of a God to say, a man of Lord God's own heart to teach us that the one who absolutely walks and talks in the terms of Lord's righteousness of that great fear Yira 3374 reflected in his attitude reflected in his daily walk of his calling in this great time but in the church age we have something far greater for us to understand for us it has been given much and expected much therefore we find in Job 1 1 to teach for us the man who was perfect and upright and the one who has feared God and eschewed evil perfect and upright that's his hope that's his tikwa the thing what he has been expected for the thing what he is having to look into a longing for a card that has been attached to the Lord of a God a card a thread can we have that expectation in the presence of the Lord of a God Though in the church age we have been made to call in Ephesians 2 to understand that together we shall, we shall build up into one royal family, the royal family of that great Lord of our God. Therefore he says, through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore you shall no more be strangers and foreigners, but you are being called as the fellow citizens. The word again, politima, but over here, sumpolitima. Together fellow citizens of the heavenly one. We have a something of a great class. We have something of a great quality in us. The poor of nature what we read to obey the Lord of our God like the way of Joseph was. The poor of nature what he said in Mark chapter 1 to teach for those fishermen. Come and follow me. I will make you the fishers of men. I will make you. The word make you is again poor o. How he can make us without inculcating in us his fear. How he can make us without inculcating in us the knowledge of the Lord of our God. And what is that knowledge? What today men are seeking? That knowledge is not of the holy ones. They are getting to themselves the unholy trios. They are getting to themselves gimmicks, tricks. They are getting to themselves miracles, healings and tongues. It's not the knowledge of the Holy One of the Lord of our God. The knowledge of the Holy One of the Lord of our God is to make you disciples. So that the word says, when we have been with some politium of the Holy Ones and of the family members of the Lord of our God, we are to be builded. How you can build by miracles or healings or talking in tongues? Doesn't Acts 2.6 teaches for us? The Eulobians who were watching them, they could understand in their own dialect. And how much clarity you require than that? What is the meaning of tongues? In their own dialect, there is not a language without having any meaning in it. Like the way how Apostle Paul writes for us in 1 Corinthians 14 to discourse and to say for us. If there is a music that has been played, if it is not being played properly, how can they understand? The same thing what he says, the loop and harp. But when the trumpets have been blown, then they shall themselves make ready for the battle. And if the trumpets are not being blown daily by the grace of the Lord of our God for his work, then certainly they would truly come to fall always into this pipe and harp ministries.
rather than the Trump administrations of giving great caution and warning, though he may be the president of the country, a prime minister of the country. Because we serve the true Lord of our God, who is a gracious Lord of our God, who is the Lord God of all powerful ones, and we are serving that Lord God of not just impossible one, the Lord God of all powerful one. And while we are serving that great Lord of our God, what the first work being built upon, what the foundation which has been laid down, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ being our chief cornerstone, upon him how we are going to build up the foundation we are going to build up with the apostles and prophets doctrine that's what we have the mind of christ that's what we have been called to renovate the standards of your thinking according to the lord's glory on this earth we are having such great privilege in the church age dear brethren if you go back and home and by the time I mean, if you go back to eternity in the presence of christ the failure of your life is regrettable like the way how the unbeliever who did not believe in my christ though we say for him for a lifetime whenever we are telling to him every day to say believe in christ believe in christ believe in christ those are here without hope without christ believe in christ note the date yesterday it was 14th october today it is 15th october 2018 every time whenever we give a warning and if you don't believe upon it you will stand in your hell and you will regret the same thing with the point of these believers as well. They will regret not to be built upon the foundation of the great apostles, the foundation upon the great prophets, and neglect the great word of the Lord our God, which has to be their life, more than the very life what they breathe. And what they do, they neglect. At the judgment seat of Christ, they regret. Because such a great polytomal privilege of true life given for us in all of the history of this Lord's will and Lord's creation of mankind. Such a great privilege for us, they can never find again. That's what corruption at the best is the worst. Much has been given for us and much has been expected from us as the scripture that we say, no Lord, we cannot. We are interested in our emotional ecstasy of the lustful patterns of the olds in nature to be having its great adrenaline in its terms of testosterone and osteogerin to be pumped up. We say that and we say, Lord, we love to do only the will of flesh because by your deeds we know very well you don't have the ear, the fear of the Lord of a God. If you have the fear of the Lord of a God, the board of a gifted pastor teacher would train you up. Whether you may have two or three, he would train you up. Whether there are none, he would talk and record the way how I'm doing and keep it for in the high YouTube for the things pertaining to his Lord's glory. He would come. Those who are interested, they would come and seek and search. We are not interested for us to make any subscribers. We are neither interested for us to say that the people are listening or not. We are neither interested to look what is the outcome of the message, what we say. It is Lord's will to go back and look and see our duty is to produce and crank it out. If you truly fear my Lord of a God, you will reflect that fear in your life and you will seek and search the truth. And let the glory be to the Lord. It is not for our account or not for our gift, says Philippians 4. Likewise, it is for your account. And in fact, indeed, when we read the righteous stewards of the Lord of a God would say, let thy money perish with thee. And at the same time, the word where many people don't understand of Matthew 10, 42, giving a cup of cold water. The word there reflects for you to teach to you and make you disciples. According to the conduct of the character of the pastor teacher. Because he has been conduct and having the character of Christ to lay down his soul for the flock. They will be given a great reward. Because we are not here for money to, take, to change our words, neither to power our judgments. Neither to give you that which is having in it evil facedness. That's what we were looking yesterday in Deuteronomy 17.1. When we are giving our life as a living sacrifice to that great Lord of our God, it should not have any blame in it. For that cause in Ephesians 1, he says, Before the foundation of the world, I have chosen you to be holy and blameless for me. And the result of it, what we have read in Colossians 1, it teaches to us to be holy, to be blameless and agnacatas, unreprovable. 
And for that cause, the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher is to train you up every day, every day, every day, not to get yourself entangled once again into the yoke of the bondage of the slave of sin. But to be always in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, without being in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you cannot have the true fear of the Lord of our God because we have to fear Lord of our God. When we fear our Lord of our God, we are shunning evil. And the number one trinity who indwells in us, Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We have been demanded not to grieve him, not to squelch him, neither to deceive him. But rather in return all the time, being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, demanding us to march in him, not just to breathe in him, nor neither to walk in him. Peripeta or no, it's to march. That's what Galatians 5.25 is all about. I zoma numati numati kaistai oikon. And we neither have any competition with our core members of our present time who are with me contemporary. Neither I'm worried about them. Let them do their work. We have to do our work. What you sow that you will reap. We are neither jealous about any other ones. Because your burden you are able to carry. But carry it in accord with the will of Lord God the Father. That's what I want to say only one word. Seek and search diligently whether it is according to the high knowledge of Lord's will or not. Seek and search diligently what is the glory of the Lord of our God in this church age. Rather than bestowing lots of fun in your service, which you think by gibberishly jumping along and dancing along and talking along and making yourselves to be fools. Rather than thinking you are serving the Lord of a God. Go back and cross check and see. Do you have real fear of the Lord of a God? Then what the Bible says. Make them disciples. There is no excuse for it. You may say I have made them closer to be disciples. Not at all. They have to get out from milk. They have to come to bread. From bread they have to get out and get to learn strong meat. Not only just to stand there in the strong meat. They have to come out from there. And they have to become the great missionaries of all time. They have to defend the doctrine of Christ. By becoming the great apologists of all time. It's not just one could call himself as an apologist. It's every believer who could be an apologist. They could train, they have been trained. And the work of the pastor teachers to speak in authority is to train you up. That's the authority has given for us not to be just like the scribes by just knowing the word. Whenever you come to the king's seat, it says in Deuteronomy 17, the point teaches for us what? When he isn't written the law, the kathab in his heart, Copying down from the Levites what they have that copy of the law. I think none of the kings have done. If they would have done, they would have continued it. So we find the men in the chronological terms of second, first chronological of chronicles. This man, the kings of Israel were like this. The kings of Judah were like this. This man did more worse than his father. This man didn't walk in the steps of his father. Why? They couldn't find this law. And when we find the case of an example of Joash, we can find when the temple was being cleansed, he found the law and he rent his clothes. By that we mean to say what? None of the kings wouldn't have really copied that law and kept as a preservation. And the Mishnah goes to explain for us, he has to write twice. If there is any mistakes, again the second time he has to copy before the presence of the Levites and keep it. And since there was no such kind of a thing which they followed, Joah's time reflects for us. When they could find that book of the law, he rent his clothes. He heard what were the orders for the Levites which had been set for them. He learnt all those things at a very tenderly age. Therefore the word says, Halaklana, train up the way the child should go. If he's not able to be trained in those terms while he's angry, in fact, indeed, the word says, Jeremiah lamented over Josh. He went against the king of Necho. There again he failed to seek not the counsel of the Lord of our God, though he did great things. Even at every breath of our life, if we are not able to seek the counsel of the Lord of our God at every step we take, because we are his property, we are his children, and to walk according to his terms, he demands us to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, no matter what you are, who you are, where you are. 
He demands in us always to look what is the glory of the Lord our God so that he wants to be glorified when we walk in his terms by wearing upon to be the righteousness and the great term of benignity of truth. Because he has called us in righteousness as Isaiah 42 6. So when he has called us in righteousness, doesn't he want us to wear the clothes of righteousness for us? Ephesians 4.24 Doesn't he want us to serve him in spirit and in truth? John 4.24 And that what are we doing? You know very well what are you doing. Look upon the kings who failed to write the law. Look upon the present Christendom kings who have been called to be kings and priests. Who haven't even made to become the flyer of heavens. Genesis 7 3 to, write, to kneel down and read the Bible seven times in their life at least. To be free from the unclean animals twice. The filth of the translation to slip the beer. The interlinear hebrew greek and aramic what we go through the things pertaining to the filth of a lion to slave the second time though it may seem appearing for us to be powerful by the grace of the lord our god we can kneel down and write the second time as well in the hebrew greek and aramic interlinear and from there on again the seven clean animals from hebrew greek and aramic you write seven times reach the number perfection so that you can say, Lord, I have been pure from the filth of the lion. I have been pure from the filth of the beer. And I'm going to right now to slave Goliath seven times. So that he demands everything in purity. Why we are talking this? Because the kings failed in the past dispensation. They couldn't even notice till they could find the law when the temple was being cleansed by Joash. Such will be the fate in the minds of today's Christendom as well. Corruption at its best stage will be the worst. Bible has become a fun in the nowadays translations when you go back and look. There is nothing like a word called as word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept to be taught every day. Very few who could come to that knowledge, very few who could take that responsibility, very few who could have that right wisdom in the Lord of a God. Yet our Lord of a God lacketh not, says Zephaniah 3.5. Morning by morning he comes to expound his attributes. In his light of the word of the Lord of God, and yet he lacketh not, adar not. By that we meant to say what he has is faithful man teaching his word. And if they have left the first love and they are becoming to be like dead, a warning through this message is for them to wake up. And put back every day, number one priority, morning and evening, every day, one hour, to teach this great doctrine in the terms of isagogic exegesis and categories, and expound them in the terms of right dispensing technique of dispensations, and train them up for the glory of the Lord our God, which is your bona fide duty. Therefore, the bona fide work of the pastor teacher should be a bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church. Without having this great bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church, we cannot handle his word. You cannot carry his burden because it is you who is going to carry through you. Provided you are sanctified yourself and kept pure. Provided you have grown up to become year A, 3374. Until unless you have been grown up to be having a witness in the presence of the Lord our God like Job. And in fact, indeed, the church age calls the Old Testament saints are nothing. Even Job was nothing before John the Baptist. But the one who has been born least in this kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. By that we meant to say what? The Tamim nature of Satan is nothing, where he says for us in Deuteronomy 18. Be perfect in verse number 13. The word perfect is Tamim. And when Satan fell in Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 15 and following, it was having a perfect character. The Tamim nature of Satan what we took. And that Tamim nature of Satan is nothing before the kinekatesis of the church age which has been given for us. And therefore he says for us in Psalms 23, 6, the head and this body will be taken care to be overflowed by the anointing work of Lord God the Father. The OC nature of this body, the unclean thing, even that will be satiated in the word of the Lord of our God. Far less you can think, you have to walk like the word called as Tamim before the Lord of a God. That was for the past dispensation, believers. But in the present dispensation, he says for us to be holy, blameless, and agnacatas. Because we have been called to be built in one body. And dear brethren, how many people will love to look upon these messages? I don't know.
They are answerable to the Lord our God. I am not answerable to them. Because when he says for us to do his will, no matter what it costs, we are doing it. Because we have him as all being powerful Lord of our God to deliver us. And then could stand in our presence as the word of the Lord of our God till we could destroy our enemy forever. The promises which he applies for us and he says, in Isaiah 54, 17, inheritance for them is me. That's enough. That's one word is enough for us. And how can we deal by keeping like Achan sin in us? And say inheritance is the Lord of our God, though we have the bona fide gift. Therefore he demands in us to know what is his will by making ourselves to be pure. He trains us to be according to his will when he demands us to call for which cause he has been demanding to sacrifice our life as a temporary one and make our lives to be number one priority for all the time being ready available like the way how Samuel was. For his call and when we have been cleansed then he's going to send us for his work. Till that time your preparation, till that time your faithfulness, till that time faithfully prepared, no matter what, whether it may rain or shine. Working for the Lord's glory day by day, working for the Lord's will breath by breath. And Lord's wish is our command, Lord's desire is our life. If this life is not worth for it, the way how David bought the incident after the milk and a cow in 1 Samuel 5 in chapter number 6, for every 30 feet, 6 oxen and 6 sheep to sacrifice, that is his will, that's the glory we need to pay. Then at every breath of our life, kneel down and read the Bible, write the Bible, read the Bible 7 times, write the Bible 2 times from getting out from the filth and go back into the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and write down 7 times. And honoring if you have greater work in the Lord's will, write 22 times. Every word, every word, every word. Do something of a legendary impact on this earth in the presence of the Lord of our God. You will understand the pain and the burden when you are writing it down. If not, like the way how Joash could be there as king and if you have not cleansed the temple, you wouldn't have found the law of the Lord of our God. So will be the minds of this Christendom, though they have Bible in their hands, they are so much burdened even to open the Bible and read, or in fact indeed to carry that Bible to the church, because now they have everything in iPods. <laughs> Electronic media. Yes, I have my smartphone, I can go back and look this, I can go back and look that. When the time comes, it will be one of an app. And they want to look it and seek it in the time of trouble, but they do not know that's the only life. That Bible is our only true life. And for what we have been kept alive, if it has not been opened up your eyes in the enlightenment of the word of the Lord of God by the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, then take it granted you have been slumbered. And you have been yet mine mine tikel. You have been found in the scales yet to be wanted. Though much has been given for us and much has been expected from us. So the word says in Ephesians 2.20 Built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Lord Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And if you have been to built upon Christ, he demands to look upon the teachings of the apostles and the prophets. Don't just be sluggish enough to look only the things pertaining to the temporal or spiritual gifts and say we are happy in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You are deceiving yourselves and the one who are hearing. Doesn't Paul wants Timothy to say, when you teach them accurately the word of the Lord of God, you yourself will be saved and the ones who are hearing to you. And if you are not able to teach them accurately according to the word of the Lord of God, you are deceiving yourselves at the same time the ones who are hearing to you. And yet, dear brethren, the great of the time in the church age where these people are spending. Earlier it was before the, before the Reformation movement. Till the 16th and 17th century, the great preachers like John Gill. And in fact, indeed, Charles Spurgeon. And many men before John Gill, Benjamin Cage. If you can go back and look there, 
momentum task of tropologians. If you can go back and look the way how they have been taken care to expound every word in Hebrew and Greek. The same thing what Charles Spurgeon also did in the same church. Though it may seem for them to be denominations coming to baptism, baptist or this or that, yet the doctrine was being taught. From there on, from the time of William Carey, headed by William Kelly and all other things like Jane and Darby, even they wanted to teach the word of the Lord of God. Because for an example we can take in the book of Second Chronicles, when King Solomon asked the king, Humer, to send a man who is perfect in cuning work. The Hebrew word says, Abi, that is my father. And when you go back and read in the same book with the other chapter where he says the way he has been sent, it is Abiv, A-B-I-V, his father. This great differentiation work has been done by the J and Darby Bible. And we can find them very clearly to understand what will be the fate if these people don't go back and look in the original languages of the scriptures. So this man, they came along with the great translations. This man, they came along with the great work. But in the 19th century and in the present 21st century, the Pentecostal crowds who have come up because it's become an easy fun for them to jump and dance and have to say that that will be a clear sign that they're having the spirit. That's what when they speak in tongues and the boy crazy, girl crazy, having their fetishes of happiness is to be grooved in them. And they love to develop those altars, the altars of idols, those altars of idolatry sins. And by the time in what? In the thinking, they develop, if I would go to that Pentecostal church, I would better find a good girlfriend who is having such kind of a godly fear attitude because she speaks in tongues. And the woman also will want to seek a man who is speaking in tongues. And you know what the world is? Being blinded by Satan. They love that which is easy. If you would say them, kneel down and read the Bible seven times and then you're qualified to write for the first time. After writing the first time, you're qualified to write for the second time, kneeling down in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic interlinear. And after that, you have been qualified to write seven times. To offer your life as a living sacrifice to Christ. They will say, what? Hardly they would open the Bible because they have been filled with the Spirit already. They know to catch some silly moral lessons and teach some moral oratories and teach them to be far from the sin. But you are in Christ, you have been called to necromate, put it out. That's what the Greek word says in Colossians 3, 5, and a moron in my place where I reside wants to preach upon Colossians 1. He doesn't even make a sense to look. What is the term called as necromate? Though it has been there in their own translation to say put to death. And the way he wants to end up to say some moral standards, legal standards, righteous standards. For whom they will do the favor if they will drink or if they will dance or if they will have adultery. To think they are doing favor to Lord. For whose sake they will not let go such kind of practices. It is their own life. If they are not kept themselves pure and sanctified for the will of the Lord God the Father in heaven, then certainly they are destroying their own life at the cost of the disgrace of great one in this earth. For whose sake they will come and do those things? They think they are doing some favorism if they let go drinking, if they let go the things pertaining to the other olds in nature activities. And the word of the Lord of God says, If you have been risen with Christ, put to death. If you don't believe and fear in the Lord of the Lord, in the word of the Lord of our God, was at was we are reading in Proverbs 9:10, you don't have the real wisdom. Neither the wisdom has been begun in you to think. You may quote the scriptures, you may think the scriptures, you may think you're practically applying the scriptures. But remember, dear brethren, Lord looks your inward renovation. Lord looks our inward transformation. Not meta schematic old ones. He knows very well who are his people. Don't try to have your life to be covered in the times in the terms of hypocritical masks. 
Lord God the Father in heaven knows very well who are his people. For that cause he has given them to become the power of sons of God. The metamorphomai, the total inner renovation he demands through his word. Not by gibberishly jumping along and dancing along and talking along in tongues. What sanctity you have, what purity you have to have the Holy One's knowledge. He has qualified you by default before the foundation of the world after believing in Christ. He has made you to be complete for his family before though you were aliens and wicked men in your in, in being enemies in the mind of the Lord our God, yet through Christ because of his Thanatos death on the cross. He has qualified you to build your house now upon that foundation of Christ in comparison to Ephesians 2.20, 1 Corinthians 1, third chapter, verses 10 through 16. In the 1 Corinthians 3, verses 10 through 16, we read the foundation being laid upon one. And many people don't believe once saved, always saved. Let them go back to their own decisions. The Bible says for you, when you're believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you have been put to death your old sin nature. You are buried Christ then and there itself. Not that in a process of time you shall learn. Because this is a serious calling. This is a serious commitment. This is a serious dedication to the Lord. We are called to look upon the Yire, the resultant of 3373 in our lives. And yet man fails because of the grace of the Lord our God being fearful that he forgives our sins making our soul to be the portion of him all the time in us. We use rebound, which is not a license to sin, but a license to serve back our Lord our God. Without him we cannot survive. And dear brethren, no man can say I haven't sinned, either by thought, word or deed, everyone will sin. Therefore we need to be aware all the time not to grave, neither to squelch, neither to deceive the indwelling entering ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but be available for His work all the time, to the praise of His glory for all the time. And yet what do we find in our churches today? Pay some huge money, do some legalistic works, run some church programs, stand in the choir and sing, pay monthly tithes, your sins have been forgiven. What a sheer ruts of programs these men are. And some of them great, they say, the greater you speak in tongues, the greater your sins have been forgiven because you are speaking in tongues greater. But I can show the people's life who have been there in the terms of the Pentecostal crowds, though they speak in tongues, yet they plot to murder their own husbands. And what else they can talk? And such are the people, dear brethren, where we can find, and they say they are the holy ones, whom they are cheating, whom they are deceiving. Are they deceiving their own selves? Even a minute mental attitude sin will disqualify you to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore the word of the Lord of God says, those who worship my Christ God, the Father in heaven, should be always filled in the Spirit and from biblical truth because he has called us in righteousness. He is demanding us to wear the clothes of Endicast. He is making us to walk in his holiness because of that great wisdom of the Lord of our God and his knowledge. Then why can't we have that year? Your attitude, your daily manner, walk of life will clearly show up to what extent you are truly having that fear of the Lord of a God. So we find in verse number 21 of Ephesians 2, we shall have that after a word of prayer. Father, as we're going to study these things, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and let and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. So in verse number 21 of Ephesians 2, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the law. The Naon Temple in the Lord. You know, dear brethren, what a privilege it is for you to be in Christ in this church age. The great men of the past dispensation, the wise men of the past dispensation, longed for this church age. Because we are growing. Oxoi. 
the growth in comparison to Proverbs 10.10 10, which could teach to us the very great lesson of growth. The right start of wisdom which is by the Yire of Yahweh and we find the word knowledge. The word for knowledge, the Hebrew code 1847 which calls for Dothphile teaching for us the knowledge of Megalad God Almighty and in combination with the fear of the Lord, that's what Yireh 3373, Yare, that will be the resultant of proper relationship between Lord God the Father or the Trinity and the man who truly obeys our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ word or the word of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim. The Dovat file which could be called for us, dear brethren, the knowledge of Megalad God Almighty. What is it? It is His Word. In comparison with the fear of the Lord. That's what we say all the time, the KT theology, the Nithang theology of the Lord. And this knowledge is from where? Who can stand in His presence? The Word of the Lord of our God calls for us those who fear, those who tremble, Isaiah 66. And how the way they fear the Lord because of His knowledge, because of His great righteousness, because of His great integrity. How are we? We would only call ourselves like Isaiah, the way he says, before the presence of the Lord of God in chapter 6. I am a sinful man. I am a man of unclean lips. Like Peter, we could claim we are sinners. Like Job, we could say we are sinners, though Job writes for us in all of these things, even by his mouth of his words, he did not sin. And we read, when we look upon his integrity, the fear of the Lord of our God because of his great Holy One presence. Therefore, dear brethren, how we shall be growing up into one holy temple, the Naon temple, if you have not been taught every day the word of the Lord our God. Therefore here we find the start of wisdom is purely the resultant of Yahweh. And how you are going to start that? The one who truly recognizes that it is only by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who is all powerful. And therefore we fear his word. We are being terror at his word. We are being showing that reverence and godliness. Yusa beyonds from Yula beyonds. And we are being reflecting in our attitude and daily life. That great form of reverence in Christ. And this is the fear of Yahweh. That great name of revolution what we have. In the completed canon scripture of the 66 books. The 66 books which teach to us all the time the great work of our Lord. And yet the people will love not to look upon the 66 books. Therefore, here we have, dear brethren, one word which says the knowledge. The knowledge of the Lord, if it is not of the Holy Ones. And the great word which calls for us, Kadosh. The Hebrew court 6919 teaches for us. It comes from the word called as Kadash, to be cleansed, to make clean, to pronounce to be clean. The concept of separation, which has been derived for us to understand the state or act which has been set aside only for the work and purpose of worshipping that great Lord of our God. And therefore they are consecrated and they have been made sacred for that purpose. So they are not be in the terms of regular or ordinary use. We have to treat our calling as a special care because you have been indwelled by the Trinity. Therefore, this Holy One refers to the sacred, which is pure, which is selected, which is holy, which has been consecrated, which is pious, which is of the sanctuary of the Holy One. Therefore, it could be called as a Ladgad's wisdom. And has revealed it for us through the prophets and has revealed it for us through the apostles after the completion can of scripture that which has been recorded and kept for us the right bona fide duty of the pastor teacher to expound them therefore dear brethren 
Our Lord our God says in the first appearance of Kadosh in Exodus 19.6, You shall be unto be a kingdom of priests and of an holy nation. The same thing what he calls for us, the kingdom of priests and kings. And that's what the Basilia and the Basilion, what we read in Revolution. That one word, kings and priests, have been transformed to kingdom of priests. And the all Israel was holy, a nation separated for God's surveys. For what? Let God's surveys. Today we are also having the knowledge of the holy ones then you should have in your mind we are separated only for lord's glory by reaching maximum glorification for christ in all the trials of your spiritual self-esteem or spiritual autonomy or spiritual maturity when you pass down the examinations you are being called to be always to remember for lord's service no matter what it may seem to you to be perfect we, the church age believers in the terms of kinecatesis in the church age, are being demanded to be for Lord's service. That's the word holy one's knowledge. In Proverbs 9 10, what we read, Kadosh. Now, many people on this earth are not able to look the holy one's knowledge. Therefore, they are yielding their body to the things pertaining to the old sin nature, lustful patterns, not able to keep it pure in spirit, soul and body. Happy are they who haven't defiled their flesh like Absalom and kept pure for the Lord's work. If they would know and realize that they have been separated for Lord's work, therefore in Christ we have been made a new creation in the Lord, so that you have been called to be the kinecatesis and you have been called to be the Lord's work and Lord's glory. The people of the past dispensation pertaining to the Israelites, they were for a peculiar treasure. The same thing in the peculiar treasure, zealous of good works in the church age, in the terms of Palaganesia, being renovated, being regenerated for Lord God's service. Now you come back and keep where it does your Achan sin fit in this calling. Or you may go back to become like the kings of Manasseh where there were several people who built in the temple of the Lord our God where he said his presence is going to be there. He built even there the grooves and sun images. The lives of these people are becoming like those worst kings. Rather than becoming their lives being separated for the work of the Lord our God and to be for the Lord's glory in the mannerism of Lord's work. They are becoming like the way the worst kings and inwardly towards even the so-called Christians who are thinking they are walking close with the Lord of a, the Lord of the Lord of a God before that Lord of Lords and King of Kings in the terms of Achan's sin in their midst. They are having such kind of an Achan sin in their midst, even in the same congregation. They may say. They love their brethren. They may say they are having the things they don't adulterate. They don't go for the things pertaining to drunkenness. I'm not promoting them either, but I'm saying physically they are pure, they may say. But legally, they hate their own brothers. They are disqualified. That's the Akan sin. The Akan sin to look that these people haven't been yet qualified. And how they will realize that they're here for Lord's service. You think you ask them in your oratory speech to let go the drinking. You think you can tell them to let go the drunkenness or the things pertaining to cupidity or approbation lusts or power lusts. And that's enough for you. When you cleanse them and say, and give a testimony, he was a drunkard, but now he's not. Do you know what, dear brethren? When they would truly tremble and fear at the word of the Lord of a God, automatically everything from their flesh activities they will put to death. They haven't seen for what purpose they are serving in this holy knowledge of the Lord for God's service. They haven't realized their future. Oh, the way how Deuteronomy says they would have considered the later end. If they would really consider the later end wherewith you are going to stay in the presence of the Lord our God forever. In His presence it demands us not our all sin nature, even a filth of an act in your simple thought. The energy of your flesh will be winded out. 
therefore the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit to be controlling us all the time to walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit to march in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit to breathe in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit so that when you go back home not just depending upon your rewards I'm talking but we are depending upon the Lord God's holy essence of his holy one holy one holy one all the time where the cherubims and the entire host of the angels proclaim for him then when we have been standing in his presence not only just to stand in Ephesians 2 as well as in 7 in the things pertaining to Revelation 2 and 3 we read he's going to make us to sit in the throne of my Christ then how much pure we need to be just imagine how much glorious we need to be right now on this earth know your future for what you have been called in Christ and how you are wasting that by just filthy liquor sake of this earth in this pilgrimage trip. Just for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley, how much your stomach can eat if you can earn by default, by the way how Simon was been taken, Simon was been cursed. If you don't curse like that and if you take the money from the people, how much your belly can eat? Can it eat the raw stuff of those papers or coins? You can't even eat more than if you can go back and divide in the denominations of those money. You can't even eat more than one kg of paper, I think. If you eat like that for two days, you will die. And are you happy for your belly for those things? Or you are happy to be hungry enough in the Lord of a God, where our Lord of a God will send in his due time is made for us. And to be hunger and to be fed only in the righteousness of the Lord of our God. And depend upon the principle where he says, Those who forsake his life for me, they shall find. And those who find their life on this earth shall lose for my sake. Because they haven't been doing the work and will of Lord God the Father. They thought they can eat this scrap papers. And earning money and not able to build up missionaries, not able to send to the other parts of the world and train them up to become the bona fide gifted pastor teachers, yet begging money, 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 money being the root cause of all evil, yet they allow to slumber upon that money. Because they think the one who is having that money is all powerful. Doesn't the word say for us, if our Lord of our God is all powerful, that's what we believe. It is in his hand to give us riches, it is in his hand to give us that wisdom. All of the heaven and the earth belongs unto my Christ. Therefore David prays, Blessed be the glorious Lord of our, Lord God of our Lord, whose name to be forever and forever. For unto whom belongs all the things of the heaven and the earth. It is in hand to make it is in his hand to make us to be rich. To give us power. When he is all powerful, the people are thinking money could be all powerful and they want to run their gimmicks. By taking this great word of the Lord of our God, by becoming entertaining clowns in the pulpits, proving their infidelity, and yet the people want that which is easy for them, and they want to join such organizations. What a shame it will be for us. But Lord of our God separated Israel for his purpose, even he has separated the church for a greater purpose than Israel. A greater purpose to glorify him. A greater purpose to live a life like Christ. A greater purpose wherewith we are now his sanctuary. A greater purpose for the plural of Baltimore privileges of heavenly calling in Christ. If in Proverbs 19 they could say, The wisdom of the Lord of our God, the holy knowledge of the one pertaining to his understanding, then how much more it should be for us in the church age when we have the completed canon of scripture, the 66 books in our hands. What a great privilege we are having today in the church age. The past dispensation believers don't even have a clue to think what we are having. Because they have been buried. Except the Israelites who have been there in the Jewish culture today. If they would go back and look at the 66 books and they would understand what is the Kadosh of the Lord of a God. And to understand that now they are church, no longer of any racial discrimination, having been given for every believer in Christ the equal privilege and equal opportunity, no more racial discrimination at all. Neither having advantages of peritoma as well. All are one in Christ being circumcised, though be not being made by the hands, but by Christ. 
and if they would come back and realize what glorious service was them to the Lord of a God and in the church age he has made the people to be much more glorious service than those nations called as Israel again they will continue after the rapture of the church the 70th week prophesied through Daniel and church age is not a period of prophecy don't misunderstand the word it is a deadlock period for prophecy you have greater things to renovate the standards of your thinking to produce in you the character of Christ. You have greater things to look upon your later end. Such and such things will be hearing for you, but it is not been to be worried for you. And how great this men were not able to realize this great glorious purpose in Christ or enjoying for boy crazy and girl crazy and joining this Pentecostal crowd. And yet this men who think they can achieve their life by talking in tongues to this maturity, woe unto them. It demands day by day learning, it demands day by day practicing, it demands day by day getting along in the Lord's mind, breath by breath. It demands nothing but our life, breath by breath. It demands our life to be a glorious living sacrifice to Christ, breath by breath. Renovating the standards from your milk to bread, from bread to meat takes time. You cannot just achieve it in a overnight. It takes time. The seriousness of your calling, wherewith you have been called in the church age, demands time to reach that maturity to be built upon. If you are building your own home, do you not how much time it will take? At the same time, we find in the parable of Luke saying for us, will you not count the cost of it? The cost of this discipleship, know you not what it is. Those who love to live a godly life, says the scripture in 2 Timothy 3, they shall certainly go through the sufferings. The sufferings of temporary sacrifice of the lustful patterns of their roles in nature, though at the prime of their age, the people may be glorious and they might be achieving greater things in this earth. But remember, dear brethren, the will of Lord God the Father alone will stand. Whatever you achieve in this earth, the history pages may record, but those history pages have been erased out before the pillars of the history pages which are going to come in the future, where with every day, every line of our page, if it has been in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit or not will be tested forever and we are we have been called to sit in his throne not just for the things pertaining to your labor what you have done but for the holy manner walk of life that you have walked breath by breath that's what it will be a very very great reward for them who humbly come in the presence of the Lord of our God and the great men before us who have done in the church age earlier than us like the way have Job did like the way have so many other great men on this earth who have done not including the examples of the Bible but those great men who could be there for us in this church age leaving behind for us a great legendary impact to walk in his walk to talk his terms if they could do it why can't we do it the very, very great man who taught word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. Every day, every day, every day. And the great man in the past dispensation, they couldn't write the Bible. Why can't we write now the Bible? If an unbeliever like Zachary Mike or Sheikh Ahmad Dida or any other morons could talk the Bible by looking to learn the criticism of it. Because of the translation errors, what we can find. And since they are also natural mind, not being born again in Christ, they cannot understand the spiritual phenomenon either, never in their life, until unless they believe in my Christ. And come humbly like the way how the deer pants for the water, as the one who wants to seek the Lord's will. Till that time they cannot come, till that time they cannot understand. When they are able to read, and if you are being a believer in Christ, and if you are also able to read, What's the difference is it been there? Therefore, dear brethren, kneel down and read the Bible not just once, seven times. Take every time whenever you finish the Bible, kneel down and read the second time and underline the great things in it. Make up your time, morning one hour, evening one hour. After that, to slip the bear, to slip the lion, the unclean animals. By the time in Genesis 7 2. And from there on, when you go back to slave Goliath every time, till seven times, writing in Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic, 
understanding every word being inculcated in your soul to fear the Lord of our God and to do his will because we have been called for his service like the way how in the past dispensation Israelites were called and they failed so we have our service today in Christ to be doing it or to be done and for that cause he prays in John 17 4 through 8 number 4 he says I have been here on this earth to the work for which you have been called number 6 he says they have kept thy word and number 8 he says in verse number 8 he says they have got the Rima declaration of thy word and that's the Kadosh the holiness of the Lord of God and in them I will be glorified said the Lord of God not in every knucklehead who calls himself to be a Christian who proves himself to have that I have such kind of a great congregation following me I have so many men looking upon me it is not that you get something into your account as from their gift it is what you're giving to their account the character and the holiness of my Christ and that demands the renovation of the standards of your thinking the knowledge of the Lord of a God plus the fear of the Lord is equal to the proper relationship between Lord God the Father, Lord God the Son, Lord God the Holy Spirit and this man who has been called before the foundation of the world to walk in integrity and in truth for his glory breath by breath. So the Israelites were been called for Lord God's service. They were considered holy because God had dedicated for a special people for a special purpose they had considered holy by the relationship to the holy Lord of a God they were urged to keep themselves separate from other nations and unholy things to please our Lord that's what we read yesterday to be pure that's what anything which is of an evil facetness you shall be far from it and you shall be pure and even including eating the food with those who are being called as brethren and the practice in the terms of their terms of drunkardness or the terms of called as adultery you shall not even be equally sitting with them to eat the food that's the separation of them because they are the things of unholy therefore Israel was to abstain from every kind of impurity that's what we find in Deuteronomy 7 5 14 2 21 and 26 19 the priests were holy before the Lord of a God. Aaron consecrated them. They officiated at the holy place of the tabernacle or the temple, acting as intermediaries between God and Israel. Now between Lord our God and the church, the panified gift of the pastor teacher, then how much more pure they have to be. How much day by day walk they have to be in the sanctification of the Lord of a God, trembling at every word of him. They have been completely dedicated to his service. Are we being the bona fide gift of the pastor teachers have been dedicated completely to the service of the Lord of a God? And though were sacred priestly garments, that's the garments what we wear today in Ephesians 4.24, given for every member who believes in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And some things were to be used only in the sanctuary by the priests. Certain holy things were for the priests and for the Levites, but some could be given to others. They were holy sacrifices. God's sanctuary was a holy place. The outer part of the holy place and the inner part was the holy of the holies, wherewith they have been dwelt now to the greater glory of Shekinah glory. And the things, the altar was the most holy place. All these locations were varying distances away from the holy Lord of a God. God is separate from all sin, death and idolatry. That's what the people are not able to understand. Why they are not able to walk in the terms of the Lord of a God? Because they love sin. They love not to expose their deeds in the light of the word of the Lord of a God because of the darkness, what they're going through. But Lord of a God is a one who is pure from all mannerisms of sin and he's pure from all mannerism of your spiritual death as well because when you haven't been believed in my Christ he doesn't have anything to do with you being an unbeliever and idolaters and spiritual death go hand in hand therefore his majestic holiness is without equal and is completely perfect he is the holy one of Israel the holy Lord of a God the holy one his name is holy none as is holy he is and Isaiah 6 3 says holy 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 that's what the KJV calls but in the Hebrew it goes holy one holy one holy one referring to Lord God the Father Lord God the 
Son and Lord God, the Holy Spirit is the Lord God of hosts. He is the judge of what is right and pure of all time. And because Lord God is holy, he is free from the moral imperfections and failure associations with mankind. We can depend on him to be faithful to his promises. He is absolutely separated from evil. He can tolerate. He cannot tolerate sin. The angels who are closely associated with him are called the holy ones. Paul's worshippers of God, that is the saints, were also called by holy one and the pious worshippers. A special category were Nazarites who were been as pure from the defilements of sin as possible, completely set apart for God's purpose. And, and Daniel 8.24 uses the term to denote Jews in general. The basic meaning of Kadash is what is intrinsically sacred and distinct, even opposed to what is common. Therefore, dear brethren, the New Testament words Hagios and Hagionas teaches to us this great separation in Christ. The simple terms for you to tell if they were born Nazarites like Samuel, Samson and John the Baptist, today every believer is a greater born Nazarite in Christ being separated, having in their mind that we are seeking the great knowledge of the true Lord our God. Therefore, dear brethren, we have in Proverbs 9 to teach for us the knowledge of this Holy One. And this knowledge which has been given for us will give the greatest prudence and understanding. Understanding our later end, understanding our every moral walk of life, understanding it is not just the moral walk but the virtue in Christ has been demanded, understanding that which has been required for us to the highest praise of His glory all the time, understanding for us to understand, to realize and to think how this grace of the Lord of our God could be bestowed in vain, but rather you would use this grace of the Lord of our God to the greater glory in this church age. And that's what you and I, dear brethren, for which cause you and I have been kept alive in the church, are been demanded to do His work faithfully. And many other people who haven't understood this great calling in the church and they are wasting their time to look not to serve that true Holy Lord of our God in right spirit of completely controlled of Lord God the Holy Spirit and in the right perspective of biblical truth. Dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short for us. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. Therefore, being built together in one body, where within Ephesians 2 7 we have read already to say that the ages to come one upon the another, we have been placed over here to be into the greatest of the holiest of the holy place. And that when we stand as an object of grace, we have to be there to grow up into that now on temple of the Holy Lord in whom we are built together, sun aiko domeste, into the dwelling place of Lord our God in our spirit, human spirit, the dwelling place of that great Lord. And that dwelling place, the Shekinah glory, where many people love not to understand about these things. It is not just about the Shekinah glory of the Ark of the Covenant, the dwelling place of the Lord our God. Therefore Isaiah 66, 1 and 2, which teaches for us, where is the house you can build for me? Where is the place that you can prepare for me? And that we would say, Lord, our soul and our body could be the place for you to rest. And if you are not able to be in the fellowship of that great Lord God, the Father in heaven, breath by breath, then no matter however, you think your body is for the purity of the Lord of our God and if it is not according to His will, you aren't being indwelt or not making your place to be the dwelling place of the Lord. Even if you can have a minute sin like the way how Achan had in the midst of that great holiest camp where our Lord of our God resided with Joshua. Dear brethren, think over these issues. Therefore, you have a responsibility of an husband. Then your wife also should have the same standards of that purity. Your children should have. The parents should have the way you teach them and train them up. Because in our camp, if we have even that minute sin, we shall not get victory. Far less we can look back and understand in the church where the people are interested to inculcate in the terms wherewith they are making their own standards to say a church is an hospital where all the people will come to do this and all various manners of sicknesses. No. Church is a university. Now the new perspective of it is that 
we have been given to be the deans of that university as a pastor teacher every believer is a professor to the angels and they come over here every day to learn what the much variegated the manifold wisdom of my christ breath by breath that's the great purpose what you and i have in the church is to train up these believers to produce them to be perfect and complete in the special agnos of my labor in the narrow gate where we walk day by day therefore dear brethren we need to understand how we have to come over here to seek and search him diligently how we have to make up our lives for the praise of his glory breath by breath therefore we have a great clause in deuteronomy which teaches to us for the great work of the lord of our god seek him diligently know him and if you're not able to make up to look those standards of diligence then certainly you're not doing his work we find your brethren in the words pertaining to deuteronomy 17 1 that that which is of the bad one are not able to meet the standards which are benefit to the lord of a god and those things are of a great inability but the word says seek him search him diligently the greater the time we are not able to spend in seeking and searching him diligently the greater your life ends up not knowing what is your calling therefore in psalms 24 we have that verse which says for us this generation describing the jacob and now describing to the church the one inquiring of him darash or diligently seeking him wherein hebrews 10 we read the one for which cause you have kept me alive o lord to do thy will he says the same thing in john 17 verses 4 through 10 for which cause he says again for us before this powers and crooked nation generations holding forth the word of the lord of our god like the lamp of his word we have to seek diligently and the hebrew word goes twice the one inquiring the ones inquiring the first one is one inquiring of him and the second one he uses the plural once inquiring of him the two things which are most essential first the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher being trained and then making his congregation to inquire diligently and what to do to bakash the one seeking the faces of the lord of a god so here we have darash inquiring and then bakash to search out john 4 24 to strive after which is nothing but for us the narrow gate colossians 1 24 through 29 and ephesians 5 18 be for us through rebound in 1 john 1 9 and we need to have what a great desire a great procuring nature to have an inquiring work and to fulfill the demands of the requirement in the faces of the lord of a god in doing his will that's what if we don't walk in the narrow gate that's what if we don't make up our life in the terms pertaining to his narrow will then certainly you are not seeking neither searching the will of that great lord god father god the father wherewith our flesh is the dwelling place of that great lord our god dear brethren think over these issues life is too short the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large never let go this great calling the way what we teach to you every day it shall not become the way how galatians 4 11 could teach for us idly without reason or without any cause how you're going to end up your lives in the standards not able to meet the lord's glory therefore we find in galatians 4 11 to say i am fearing for you lest somehow the idea of a failure without a reason and cause that I have labored unto you in vain. Because, dear brethren, as Apostle Paul could say, when the time comes where the people will not be for the great work of the Lord of our God, but they will produce in them those itching ears to seek and search those men who shall not be able to make them to endure in sound Bible doctrine, but rather entertain them with entertaining clowns. Therefore, they will develop themselves those itching ears. Those itching ears churches have become more today in our pulpits 
rather than the right duty of this great word of the Lord our God. For that cause we say the time of a perilous ones where people are seeking and searching pleasures rather than the unique will, the true will of that great Lord our God. So dear brethren, we call for you again and again to say our labor should not go in vain. It is in the hand of the Lord our God to produce this fruit. We are here to earnestly come and sow in weeping the word of the Lord our God. And when the time comes, the word says, you shall reap it joyfully. And having that fear in the word of the Lord our God, we come again tomorrow in the same fellowship of that God, the Holy Spirit, to sow with the pleasure of Lord's will and to reap Lord's glory, breath by breath. So think over this issues, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order of returning to Lord God the Father, that to believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for you is so very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest part is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess another truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry Satan Lagan, herald the word in season and out of season, because the Dharma Truma witnesses by which you have been called. The number one Dharma Truma witnesses in Wellington Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two Dharma Truma witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry, besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord our God, no matter however the chips may fall. This is a very great calling for the Lord our God to be kept ourselves pure as more than the Nazarites were, so that we are handling his word to teach his people, so that in his people of the Lord our God would dwell in their hearts, the Naon temple, the holy of the holies. And when we are training that with the authority of the Lord God's will, then how much more pure we have to be and get separated ourselves from this lustful patterns of the old sin nature. And so, O Lord our God, not for the filthy liqueur, but willingly to pay wherewith we come over here not with grudgingly but willingly humble enough to carry this dispensation of grace of the burden upon our shoulders to honor his word above his name and to see where the people are not able to have this proper revolution to provide them this proper revolution and to see the people may not perish like the way how Stephen said father forgive them they know not do they know not what they do in that same character we come to be the Stephens of this earth and say Lord provide them more grace to learn thy word, lest they perish in their wrath by not knowing the truth. Yet we ask for the Lord our God to give his men that great wisdom, courage, and that great burden of the Lord our God with a true heart to carry his work breath by breath and teach this greatest work of the Lord our God in the midst of those pulpits and train them up to become his people for all time, being that peculiar people being separated for his work. So, dear brethren, Though they are perishing, the pain of our heart is to see Lord, is to ask our Lord to provide them this information so that they could go back and make up their lives to be considering the later end to be far more glorious than the days which they are going through without knowing my Christ. So dear brethren, think about these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great privilege it is for us to have fellowship with you through the word. Father, we pray the things pertaining to the pain of our heart, though we come and sow in weeping every day, O Lord. We want to have thy joy of glorious glory, not to be credited to our account, but, O Lord, that which is due unto your name, that glory which has to come through you, to you. So, Father, we know very well the things that are happening in the church age. At the same time, O Lord, you are the omniscient one, and you know very well what are the things that are happening much better than us. But, O Lord, as far as us, and as far as we, the people who have been there to listen to the steps of those who are people who are really fearful for thy word, O Lord, let them separate themselves and get back into that holiness of thy glory. And walk in the fellowship of great righteousness and in truth, providing to wear that new clothes of Endicaius in Echa in the terms of great worshipping the Lord of a God in the right fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit being controlled to learn to erase that garbage in their soul from the right perspective of biblical truth. Those who are caught temporary with me, O Lord, who are working in the same privilege of Help, helping to teach word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, provide them greater grace for their glory, so that, Father, thou alone might be glorified. No, and not, and never unto us, O Lord, to be for 
to be our honor but unto thee O Lord for thy glory because we are unprofitable slaves that which is our duty to be done we are doing it in Christ's matchless pure Lord's gracious name we pray Father strengthen us more and more to be more effective in the work and the Lord till the time could come we believe we are immortal so that Father when you can take us back home we shall not be ashamed neither we shall be ashamed to call us your sons though Lord we have done many sins knowingly or unknowingly yet O Lord we pardon for that and we ask for thy grace upon that house also Lord and henceforth O Lord to live a life a life of truth in thy name help us to strengthen more and more for thy work the one and the ones what you have mentioned for us in Psalms 24 6 of the original Hebrew the singular and the plural when we are with there in the private fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit we can go back and teach them who are been there to thy will according to thy glory who are really obeying for thy grace and who are ready to do thy will and carry this burden upon their shoulders so father the one and the ones darish darash and seeking thy will and seeking to have that great pertaining to inquire diligently and to be in the fellowship help us a lot to do that to do thy will according to the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit breath by breath and nothing else on this earth we need O Lord than to be a faithful stewards of the word all the days of our life and when we come back home not to be ashamed but to say O Lord like an unprofitable slaves that which is our duty to be done we have done it in Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray Father may Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in these terms Amen <laughs>